So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, I'm so honoured to have this star on the show that's literally moulded mine and many others' childhood, the Velvet Hammer from Mighty Ducks, Wet Hot American Summer, the Queen of the Damned, Marguerite Maru. Welcome to the show, Marguerite. Thank you for having me. Do you know what? I am so, so excited. This has literally put the cherry on the cake for me this week. It really, really has. Uh, Before we delve into... Uh, the Mighty Ducks and a few of the other uh, key pieces in your career that I just think are just outstanding. Um, The last two years have been quite challenging to say the least. Um, You know, it's, 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 it's been crazy. So how have you kept positive and moving forward over the past two years um, where you are? I think that I have had to be really creative, actually, because I have a small uh, child. And so there was lots of days of music on the driveway, maybe an earlier adult beverage, and the paints were out, or playing guitar and realizing, oh, in order to learn how to play this guitar, I've been dragging around for the last 20 years, I have to slow down. So I think the pandemic gave me the permission to remove myself from the hustle because nothing was going on and just be at my house in a way that I hadn't gotten to. So that kept me sane for sure. And with young kids, because I've got two young girls myself, and I've got to say how resilient they are during that time i've got a five-year-old and a nine-year-old two girls and it's just it's crazy on how really you know they haven't been that affected i don't think that you know they're going to remember it um you know it's going to be one of those things that's going to be taught in history in years to come uh but it's just great i mean having kids definitely puts a positive swing on everything mad going on in 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 the world they always um you know puts a smile on my face it really does um so why acting marguerite why not another nine to five career where you can finish at five go home and relax what was that spark all the time (laughs) (laughs) you know brian i started so early that for me it was like do you want to be an astronaut do you want to be the president do you want to be an actress, you know, it was all still the world is my oyster at 12. And um, in the sense of like continuing to choose it as an adult, I studied political science in uh, university. I I really found, um, well, the environment of the movie industry less toxic, I think, <laughs> than politics. <laughs> I was so right about that in America. Um, but also, you know, it going to movies and and watching television was so formative for myself and it taught me how how to make friends and acting taught me how to be comfortable in my own skin and um you know those are things that all you know people really want i really wanted mm. that and so mm. i've always appreciated it as a practice because it gives me those things and you started out so so young um, i mean from a young age did you ever have a, have a plan in place on what you wanted to do within your acting career I think I, when I was young, I would always say, I just want to work with great directors. And then I got this opportunity to work with great directors and with great material. Like I really had a good team. But Mm. other than that, I was just sort of going from job to job because really I, I still feel today that like any opportunity that I get, even if it's just the audition and I don't get that juicy part, I'm so, I get so passionately involved because you have to put your own stamp on it. So Mm. I, like I said, I like the practice of creating and what it reflects to myself and like telling stories to people or listening to stories. This is my favorite. And what a way to start off your career. I mean, your first motion picture, let's talk about the Mighty Ducks that literally has molded the the globe it really really has uh, because they don't make films like that anymore they really don't so the franchise is firmly cemented in our hearts and not only have we seen three movies but we've seen now a great series on disney plus so how did the role of connie come about for you how was it uh, pitched to you uh, right at the beginning Well, it really was pitched because there wasn't a scene to actually audition with to get the role. So I was auditioning for the role of Carp, which was a bit of the instigator, uh, the little uh, kid with the little Russian hat. Um, And so they just said, she's she's a tomboy. 
And um, I think I had to look up things like Velvet Hammer, you know, things I just didn't understand. But what was great was I was like taller than all the boys and was very happy to knock them over. So I think they saw that like I have a brother that I had to always keep in line. Um, so I was happy to do that with 12 more. <laughs> <laughs> and did you <laughs> and did you know how to skate beforehand? I mean, did that come into the the pitch that you may have to skate? Absolutely, or, yeah. And, and I mean, did I you lie? Skating, like twice before, so I knew how to skate. <laughs> and um, but I actually was a ballerina, so I had like really good balance. But that was, I would say, like the best part. Well, one of the best parts of making the film was how they turned us into a real team and sent us all to camp for like a month where we, we like trained really hard every day. There was no, um, the fanciest thing was about it was that you got pastries, <laughs> like <laughs> things that I would never get at home, like chocolate croissants after three hours of practice. <laughs> and talking about obviously when you started filming, I mean, a movie set just full of kids what on earth could go wrong i mean what was it like to be on a set full of very excited um you know pastry fueled you know kids i mean well, what was that like this is what happened brian i ate too many pastries because <laughs> we stopped playing hockey every day um you, you know i think uh i was very distracting there was cute boys everywhere and i was very boy crazy so I really had to focus right right I have to learn my lines and and then uh I have a natural enthusiasm so I was really into all the work on the bench that was no mm. problem and and how stressful was it for the director because I know that Richard Donner had come out and said how stressful it was working on the Goonies because being with all them kids it's what they say is never work with kids and animals um but how you know how stressed was Steve, Stephen, and did he have any techniques um to deal with you all well he was very quiet and very focused like he didn't get flustered visibly in front of us so that always gave us a feeling that we were being really listened to and paid attention to which you know is really helpful uh when you're surrounded by adults and there's it's kind of high pressure and um all the kids are messing around or whatnot but like i really wanted to learn it was my first movie so i was always like they were like all right everyone kind of come up by the bench and then amelia is going to say this and charlie will say this and we'll see what happens and i was like okay so if she's there and he's there, i'm gonna put myself right here and just like watch what happens mm. and so he gave us lots of opportunities if we wanted to learn but i will say it took six months to film it because it was slowed down due to kids and the ice and um he did not direct the second one <laughs> so i think he had, had his fill he put his mark on it and was like good luck i mean obviously you went to camp for did you say a month to to get to grips with how to skate i mean how hard was that and was there any injuries and who was the best and who was the worst emilio i will probably not mind us saying that he was the worst you know it's like kids in languages they can just pick it up quick they're like this high off the ground so when they fall it's just like plop and then they get right back up and it was a real camp like they treated us like real players we were in and out of that dressing room quickly the the coach really drove us and by the end kids were going home and playing on teams i was in this i from southern california there's no girls hockey teams you could play on the 18 or older or 16 or older at like three in the morning. And my mom was like, absolutely not. And I was like, that's fine. I don't like it that much. You know, I'll wait mm. till the next movie and play. But I would say Garrett who plays Guy is extremely good. And um, uh, Matt who plays Averman, they both still play and they're quite, quite good. And everyone got better and better. I just got less like, I was very good, but then they kept practicing and I was like not able to. And so then I became a target because they all grew and I never grew from the first day on Mighty Dax. I stayed the same height and boy, by the third one, they were like, we're coming for you. You've been checking <laughs> us for years. And so I definitely um, had some pretty bad falls and sprains uh, playing with the big boys now. 
uh, mm. by the third one. I think I got hit in the teeth once too, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Do you know what? I, I am so jealous because I've tried skating so many times and I can skate, but I can't stop. You know the stopping part is 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 impossible. I even bought myself a nice pair of bowers when I was younger, yes, thinking, good. "Yeah, I can do this." You know, and yeah, I just just can't. Literally, um, I would love to take my girls, but I'll be too dangerous to be honest around my girls. So, um, what if you treat a clinic or something? Hmm? Yeah, I, you know, I could you, do. You can learn to hockey stop. If I can learn to hockey stop, you can learn to hockey stop. It's, <laughs> it's not as hard as you think, and it's super fun. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Imagine, but it's it's. I suppose when you said about obviously the kids learning it quicker than Emilio, I suppose kids are fearless. Like literally, they don't mind falling, but right. adults they know that when they fall, they're going to hurt themselves. So. It makes it even harder. And talking about Emilio, obviously in this film, you know, he was at the height of his career. And he he is forever on my list of great actors. I just think he's absolutely amazing. What was he like to work with? Because you're all very, very young. You know, did you realise how big of an actor he was? And what was he like actually on set with all of you? Oh, I knew how... Um fantastic he was i had seen the breakfast club i'd seen young guns wow. i was um i was in awe um but also he was so normal that it was more this it was exciting to be able to relate to him and then for him to teach us how to be on set like he was a real leader and and taught us about how to be kind and considerate and um you treat treat it with respect and and the industry will treat you with respect so he really took us under his wing and then did cool things like rented out arcades and like um uh, like go-kart places for us to some you know like someone's birthday wow. and i mean coming from my little small town where you know he didn't really want to go to the arcade because he like didn't have enough money to play for longer than like five minutes it was so fancy and fun uh, but the question is, do you have him on your your speed dial? Do you speak speak to him still? Uh, yes, I can email him. And I have definitely over the years. Aww. Anytime I see a movie that he's made and I'm like, I just got off the plane. I watched <laughs> No Way I Saw the Whole Way. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously, you know, Mighty Ducks is celebrated um, today so much around around the world. Um, why do you think it's lasted so long? You know, the appeal. I mean, why do you think it's still loved by so many? I mean, who doesn't love an underdog story? Also, I think, um, I, mean, I mean, this is just a guess, but we didn't have the internet back then and we didn't mm -hmm. all get to talk about it as a as like a bigger community and it's been for for me who had you know it was so formative of course it's going to be a big deal in my life but i didn't necessarily know that it was a big deal for other people like i have those movies that i watched a kajillion times as well so i relate i also watched the mighty ducks a kajillion times because it's amazing but also because i couldn't believe i was in it because <laughs> i was like wow i've been i've been something super fun um and to connect with fans and uh, and people who uh, have stories of their own uh, lots of girls who went on to be on hockey teams and to also share like the pictures that I had on set there seems to be a nice opportunity to share uh, mm. now with social media that that it didn't get done yet you know while it was happening it's really nice and why while you were shooting you know these Mighty Duck marvelous movies uh, you had to still go to school I presume um, yeah. I mean, what was that like being in such a successful Disney movie and then going back to high school? Because I can imagine it can go two ways. You know, either everyone looks at you and thinks, oh, wow, you know, she's Marguerite from Mighty Ducks. Or you can have some people that can get a bit jealous. I mean, what was your high school uh, life like during, you know, the height of your career during the uh, Mighty Ducks? Oh, I was just laughing about this the other day with some friends. Um, I went to Newport Harbor High School uh, down the road in Newport Beach, California, and everybody was like pretty comfortable in their skin and didn't care. I mean, I think I got in the senior yearbook where they're like, 
you know, best eyes, most talented. I got like third most talented. <laughs> and I had, so it was like, nobody treated me different um, from that. And I really appreciated that because I had missed a lot of school just for various reasons. And it was nice to just be there and mm. make my own mistakes and be a knucklehead and fall in love and all mm. those things that you like to go to school. Which is quite refreshing to hear because you hear so many horror stories of child you know, actors that literally have such a horrible time in the youth that carries over. I mean, I had Jerry Kramer from Flight of the Nav- Nav- Navigator on the show, and obviously he had had a troubled past, and he's and he's come back a bit like Sean Wise as well, which I think is fantastic. I mean, I just think it's brilliant. Um, but I've got a question from a fan. Um, sure. His name is Mike. Hopefully, this this will work. And if if it does, I'm a technology genius. So here we go. I'm going to play the video. Here we go. Okay. Fing- fingers crossed. Hey Brian, big fan of Be More Super. Love the podcast. Amazing guest this week. But I do have a question for Marguerite. During the filming of the Mighty Ducks, was there any offset rivalry between the cast of the Ducks and the cast of the Hawks? And anything you can share around that? Thanks. Did that work? Yes, it did. I'm I'm thinking that really what happened was we just immediately took Adam Banks over and then just made ruthless fun of him whenever he had to be like super preppy and on the hot <laughs> because he was like in our crew like immediately. And anytime he went over there, he just got the piss taken out of him by all the boys because of, of his little high collar and perfect haircut and everything it was just more for teasing rather than a fierce rivalry and mm. they couldn't do that with iceland and with the older boys in the third one because they really would have gotten their asses kicked so they just awesome finished. awesome so mike that is your question answered and going from the mighty ducks franchise now to the disney plus series game Chang- changes which has gone into season two as we speak absolutely marvelous and i think all parents out there including my, my myself when we heard the rumors that the og crew was getting back together i've got to say i was so so excited i think i've got a picture here um that i'm going to put on the screen there we go i mean you know how did you get approached to come back for this disney series oh i think uh during the beginning of the pandemic the writer kind of reached out to everyone and was like would you even be available? Would you be interested? How do you feel during COVID? And then he saw what his budget was and saw what was going to happen and then reached out. And a month later, I was in Vancouver with all my guys. It was great. And what was the experience like getting all the equipment back on and and putting the skates skates back on? Was it like riding a bike? I mean, what was it like? Kevin, Brian, I mean, no, I mean, it was a bike that needed some oiling. Let me tell you, <laughs> I was skating across the ice like this. I was a little like, excuse me, I've had major training. But what was crazy was I would sit in the box with Emilio, we'd be chatting, and then they like bring the camera over, and I would forget that I'm supposed to be my current age, the character at my current age. I would just drop right back into, you know, the 12 year old little kid. It just was like sense memory or something with the pads on and the boards there and the smell of the Zamboni going by. And I just wanted to hop the boards and deck someone. It was great. And with the young actors now that are in that show, I just think they're incredible. They really, really are. I mean, did you give any any of them any advice? Um, what, what were they like to work with? I, it was... It was touching that they were so excited because we're we're to them we're old like we don't feel old mm. but I'm sure they're like oh these guys <laughs> but they were so excited when we got there I definitely told all of them if if they fall if they fall for each other to stay friends because the Mighty Ducks world is a long time and you keep seeing everyone so even if it's not a sweetheart or a best friend or if you're not the same kind of personality just don't burn any bridges and be gentle with each other because you're part of like not only a a movie or a show, you're part of like something that feels more like brothers and sisters over a long time. And it's special to a lot of people. Mm. I I mean, they cast people with that in mind though, Brian, for sure. Mm. I mean, do you think it's, do you think it's easier being a child actor now 
than when you was a child actor? No. No, 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 no. Because like, I have like a few pictures of me and it's just part of it. It's so much more visible. And I think self-consciousness, which is natural for a teenager anyway, or a preteen, it gets in the way of the work, right? Mm. It'll change you. So I, I think having having a little distance between your awareness of yourself and um, the work is better. Mm. I mean, the, the the great thing about this new series, I think as a parent, I want my kids to enjoy what I enjoyed when I was a kid. And so I have forced them to watch all the Mighty Ducks. And again, they're <laughs> nine and five. And the problem with kids now, they are so content rich li literally getting their attention for an hour to an hour and a half is is hard work because they watch videos that are like 10 15 minutes long mac maximum um but the great thing is they like the mighty ducks um which yay one down um <laughs> but <laughs> the question i wanted to ask because obviously you've got a little one apart from the yeah. My mighty ducks what films would you want or are looking forward to introducing your little one to from your childhood well the goonies that you mentioned already did that um he's not that little he's seven okay. and then um we just watched last weekend and over the last couple weeks because he's had a lot of um, holidays it was the back to the future series and we did jurassic park for his birthday over the summer i mean to get to sit side by side and eat popcorn as excited as they are and then say okay so when owen did this did, was that your favorite part and which is your favorite dinosaur it's the same thing with he likes the game changers i think he's responded to that more quickly because mm. i think nine is the right age to start mighty ducks personally because mm. it is slow sort of at the beginning so um yeah, those are my movies. I kind of went off on a tangent. Look how excited I got. It's such a big <laughs> deal to get to share it. I love in the Game Changer series, actually, that he could enjoy wanting to be Evan and running around with a hockey stick. And I'm like, oh, my God, he came, Emilio came out on like a Zamboni and the horns went and he's eating cake. And I was like so involved myself. I really appreciated that we could like something together. Oh, you're so so lucky because one of my favorite movies is superman the movie because yeah. i i named my nine-year-old after lois lane so her name's lois and then my five-year-old is called cara after supergirl do they like superman they don't like superman literally it's they they are named. They've got to like like them. There's no way around it. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They like Spider Man. What about DC High or whatever? Super Super Go. I've tried. I've literally you tried. tried. Do you know what? Being a parent, you should let your kids explore and be themselves. But we sort of try and force certain things onto onto them. Uh, but it's fine. I'm I I am fine. Whatever they like. Uh, obviously, they don't love superman but it's okay but they might going back later, to, though, you never know they haven't ne met henry, henry cavill yet have they no not yet not yet and uh that's a whole different conversation sir yes and that's some, <laughs> someone that i'm keeping away from my wife uh because <laughs> my wife uh likes him um but um <laughs> going back to mighty ducks what's your fondest memory of working on the whole franchise we had some really big special moments um, that you just don't get anywhere else in life where you're taping up to get ready for a scene and you're really on the set of the locker room. It's where you do it. You don't do it in your um, dressing room or whatever. And there's Wayne Gretzky right next to you answering questions and laughing with you and um, you know, hitting a ball of tape around with sticks. Also, you know, they would announce us to come out in the big stadium and then we really scrimmaged while they shot and you got that sense that hockey players have in, in doing their thing with so much love and support they were so magical um the heightened elements of it besides making lifelong friends was mm. phenomenal and now there's an actual hockey team named from the mighty dogs um yes. I mean, do you get free entrance, free goodies? Do you get the red carpet sort of you know, entrance? I've been very blessed by the Ducks franchise. They are my home team in Orange County, California. And uh, 
and I've gotten to uh, I've gotten to do so many wonderful things because of them. It's been great. It's I mean, of course, they they admitted to us recently, like it was really hard to be named after a a Disney movie and come out and legitimize themselves. But they said it made them work that much harder because we thought it was the coolest thing in the whole world. We didn't realize that the hockey players might have been like, this is going to be a hard one. You know, <laughs> it's not exactly the Blackhawks. <laughs> But um, but move, moving on to um, you know a great vampire movie because you know we all love a great vampire mo- movie. And Queen of the Damned is one of my favourites. It really, really is, um, and it's got a great soundtrack, amazing cast, uh, and a great telling of the story. I mean, what did you love about this project? Because it's such a great movie. Oh, I think my favorite was that I wanted to get turned into a vampire. So I was like, let's go, let's go, let's get to the end. And they made me wait till the last day of shooting to do it. Um, but I I think like like most people, that is sort of an intoxicating idea. And so I kind of chased after the project with that in mind. Mm. I mean, I love you know, how vampire movies, movies are Sorry. always based around London. Um, which I just I just think is great, uh, you know that gothic sort of feel. And Stuart Townsend is just an amazing, amazing Lestat. He really, really is. I mean, do you think we'll ever see um, uh, Jesse back um, for a, a another film? You know, as as yeah, as the vampire. There's a, there's a new Lestat um, series coming out. I think. Interview with a vampire. Yes. 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 That would so, be so fun. So, what you 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 breaking the news now that you could be making an appearance? <laughs> How about we just float the suggestion? It Ooh. starts here. Oh yeah. yes, I like that. Let's get it trending on, yeah. on 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 Twitter. But I also like how Jonathan Davis did a cameo, uh, selling the mm. tickets apparently, um, and he obviously wrote and sang all the songs in the movie. But I think it's really odd that that because of licensing, when they release the soundtrack, it had to be yeah. sung by different people. I, what, what do you think that is? Like maybe like a deal that was made or because he was not on Warner Records or some busy it'll, business thing? It would be money, wouldn't it? It'll, yeah. it'll, it it would be money and, and it's sad, sad to say, but the soundtrack is just fantastic. It really is. Um, and he's and- lovely. <coughs> yeah, I got to work with him on the, the, the show and he was very soft-spoken, which is interesting because of his performance style. Mm-hmm. Um, and the intensity of his music. But we were both from, he's from Bakersfield, California, where it, I had been living for a bit of my childhood. So we kind of had that in common and kind of went from there. And then I want to move on quickly to Wet Hot American Summer, which is literally one of my all time favorite shows. And I really wanted to go Walla Walla Hoo. And, but walla I. Walla I walla hey. <laughs> because honestly, it's. <laughs> When I, I when I watched the movie, I just thought it was so off the wall, so crazy in places, but it was beautiful. I mean, I I haven't laughed so hard, um, and I just thought it was a masterpiece. I really, really did. Uh, what attracted you to the role of Katie on America, uh, Wet Hot American Summer? Oh, I loved her earnestness that was covered by her you know popular i'm gonna make it all work out for you but then inside she was just like i just want to have experiences and be open and sweet and i like that she was sort of the heart there was a bit of like you could hang out with that one a lot of the other people from wet hot you probably couldn't take them home and explain them to your parents well this is the post post for it here which is just amazing i mean your character is kind of mean um, in the film, in places, which I think, from a, a man's point of view, a bit cruel but funny. Um, Coop, you know, I just felt for him throughout the whole film and the series. <laughs> and and the series. Um, I mean, it's a fun, phenomenal cast, and obviously, not only do we get a movie, we got a Netflix, uh, Netflix series, and then another Netflix series as well, which was, um, it was first day at was it first day at camp was it? Mm-hmm. It was first, yeah, first, first day at camp. And then, and then, is it 10 years? 
later, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the cast is 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 phenomenal. I mean, who was your favourite to work with, and can you share any potential stories of the actual? Now I'm looking at who is my favorite. Well, I loved working with Paul Rudd because he could come in and we could figure out the nut of the joke and then toss it off if it wasn't working and just come up with something in the moment. He's the type of guy yeah. that can, yes, pick up a guitar and just like come up with a song right there. Whereas, you know, other people will have to learn it for a, quite a long time before they do it. And so he really inspired me to trust my instincts in the moment because a lot of this um, is sketch, more sketch based. So it's all scripted. Mm. I loved working with Amy Poehler. She was incredibly, incredibly generous. Um, I adore John Hamm. Uh, and I love Michael Showalter. I always want him to act. I mean, he's a huge director right now. He just directed the Oscar winning mm. Jessica Chastain in the, the Eyes of Tammy Faye. And he played Coop and, and co-wrote the Wet Hot series. So he, I think, is a phenomenal underrated actor. But he's like, no, no, I like to direct. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're so yummy to work with. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's great. And he was fantastic as, uh, uh, was he um, Ronald Reagan? Um, yes. And it was so good, honestly. The show right. is just fantastic. And uh, all, right. the, all the listeners and, and, and viewers need to watch it. It's on Net Netflix right now. I, oh, I read you. that the budget was so low during the film that you had to stay in the actual chalets. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was... Uh... We stayed in the infirmary because those were in independent, like individual rooms, but there was like no insulation. It was freezing. We wore three layers of clothes and stayed warm with like whiskey at the end of the night and then just quickly derobed in bunk four, which is where our wardrobe was, and then ran over to bunk two to get our pigtails and then ran out, did the thing and then got dressed again. Oh. It was raining the whole time. Do you know what? Watching this is has made me have a major regret because when I was younger and I was a student, uh, we had a thing called Camp America in the UK that you can go over for a summer and be a camp counsellor. And then you could do a bit of travelling afterwards. And I went to the orientation, but I didn't actually end up going. Um, and I regret it slightly more now watching this movie because who knows what could have happened. Um, <laughs> it looks it looks you awesome. Can you your girls? Sorry? Do you think you'll send your girls? Um, do you know what? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you, you, I'm, I'm the type of person. I'm quite protective of my girls. I'm like, literally, when they're in the schoolyard and a little boy pushes past my five year old, I'm having thoughts in my head that really I shouldn't be. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I've got your number, mate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to remember you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm all I'm all for 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 that. But talking about the UK, um, you're coming over um, in I December. Am. Have you been to the UK so before for a convention? No, no, oh. it's my first European convention. Wow, UK first as well uh, to Wales Comic Con, uh, which it hasn't it, it isn't actually in Wales. It's in Telford. It used to be in Wales, but they've moved it to a bigger, flasher, nicer venue, which is the Telford okay. International Centre, and it okay. is amazing. I go twice a year. Um, it's just so well organised. Uh, the people there are just lovely. They really, really are, and the guests just seem to be having a whale of a time, which, which is great. Uh, I've got a slide here to show that, um, oh, I think so, there we go. So you're coming over, over, but you're not coming over alone. So we've got a few people that's coming over, apparently with you, uh, which yeah. is the cast, <laughs> uh, a lot of the cast from My Mighty Ducks, uh, which yeah. is awesome um yeah you know what's it like have you actually um have you actually been to a convention with the other cast members uh in the u.s only once and it was fantastic so when they asked me for this i was like oh that sounds great it was re it's, it's like we almost have a hockey team <laughs> and <laughs> and do, 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 do you know what it, the, the the buzz it's causing online already is just amazing it really really is i mean uh, you know apart from the one that you've done before have you done conventions before is this your like second convention ever 
Really? Yeah, and it was the other one was like kind of more like a throwback to the 90s. I don't mm. know, is this like a Comic Con or like a sports con? Oh, do you know what? what? They have got guests from from film from tv um you know they've had in the back uh, past uh, they've got quite a lot of the cast from the new uh, star trek show so they've got uh, anson mount they've got uh, ethan peck um you know they've got tons they really really have uh, i mean what what is it about conventions that you like that you liked from the last one that you did well i, I think that I've done such a range of different kinds of projects and it's really nice to meet all the different types of fans. I think it's a great opportunity to actually connect in person. Mm, mm. And it's just it's just going to be great to have you over because the thing is with with stars, you know the like the paparazzi. I always find it awkward that when I see someone, you know, a celebrity celebrity or someone famous that I I always you know stand back and think i'm not going to interrupt their day but the great thing about conventions you're there on your own terms so mm -hmm. you get you have your pri private life and then you mm -hmm. come to these conventions so fans can actually meet you which i think is just fan fan fantastic there's no guilt or anything like that um but the question is 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 what do i get signed from you because literally i've bought the um wet hot american summer comic um that i'm going to get signed um okay. and then i've got a mighty ducks jersey um oh, I hope so. which i want to get signed and then queen of the da honestly i'm going to use my budget basically on you marguerite you know what Please. i mean <laughs> just 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 use it all <laughs> sign Come everything hang out with us. we'll have a great time the, the ducks crew is very cool and everybody's so sweet and mm. we're just a good group of i would say lads but there is there is a girl and it might even be two. I think Jane from the first movie might be coming as well. Oh, oh, an exclusive yeah. there. So, so we'll have to wait and see. And and I'm really looking forward to meeting Sean as well because you know it's quite nice to to. I mean, you know, he's been in the press, um, and the press are not always kind, um, but he seems to be doing very very well for himself. He seems to be turning a corner. Um, so it'd be quite nice to meet to meet him because it's just heartbreaking when you hear sto stories like that where people decline and you know when mental health doesn't always work out for you. So it's quite 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 nice nice to see him succeeding, uh, which which is great. Um, so I've got. Thank you for saying that, Brian. I it, appreciate that. It it is because you know what, you know, life isn't always perfect, and I th I think that. You know, we see celebrities and straight straight away when when we see someone famous that are having a hard time, I think they go after them quite, quite horribly and yeah. they need to remember that it affects everyone. It doesn't matter how old, young, female, male, which, whichever, you know, it affects everyone. So we just need to be nice and supportive and and I'm sure he'll get a, an, an amazing reception because everyone loves a bit of Goldberg. And, um... I mean, that's the thing, is he gave so much mm. to all of us in his performances. So this support that he gets really means a lot to him. Mm. The Ducks family has rallied around him. We cherish him and have been really enjoying our time with him. Mm. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. I've got three more quest questions uh, okay. before, before we wrap up, and I'll let you... Uh, continue your day if you could choose one project you've been involved with as your proudest moment to date which one would it be and why oh i mean the mighty ducks changed my life changed everything for me uh, i'll be a duck forever excellent and who's been the one person you've worked with that in a heartbeat you'd work with again don't make me choose one <laughs> you've got to choose one um, Bradley Cooper. Excellent. Good choice. Good choice. And, <laughs> and a line taken from Wet Hot American Summer. If your life was a movie, what title would it be? I'll see you in macrame. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, we'll, leave, we'll leave it with, with that. Marguerite, you've been a great guest. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, and I can't wait to say hello to you in Wales Comic Con uh, coming at the beginning of December. I'll put the link on the video before. Um, yeah, keep safe and stay super. Thank you so much for being an awesome guest.
You too, Brian. Thanks so much.